Welcome. In this video, let's explore the question, what is the complex number i raised to the i-th power? This seems like a very unusual question, um, and, but we actually can figure out an answer. This video does assume extreme familiarity with calculus. Uh, some beginning calculus enough to get us through this question it appears in Volume 5 of my Thinking Mathematics series, which is available on the website. If you want to learn real calculus all the way through, go to Volume 6 and 7. Okay. But assuming we've got some calculus under our belt, let's go ahead now and ask the question, what is i to the i? And to do that, we first have to ex examine the function y equals e to the x, where e is a very special number in calculus. Well, for those familiar with the subject, we well know that the derivative of e to the x is itself, which is very nice. It means this particular exponential curve has the property that it's the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point equals the height of the function at that point. Remarkable. Actually, we need a little bit more than this. Uh, let's examine something like e to the 3x and differentiate this. The root of e to the 3x is really uh, found by using the chain rule. When you think it's the exponential function applied to the quantity 3x. So by the chain rule, the root of the e feature is just e times whatever input we have. And the chain rule says then multiply by the root of the input. The root of 3 to the x is 3. So actually, the root of e to the 3x is just 3 e to the 3x. And in general, the root of y equals e to the kx is k times y, uh, e to the kx. So if I asked, for example, uh, find me a formula uh, which satisfies its derivative is 7 times itself. Uh, let me make it be more specific. And I want its value at 0 to be 1. Well, we've just seen a whole class of functions the derivatives are basically themselves the e functions. In fact, we can see that y equals e to the 7x does the trick. Differentiate y to the 7x, I'll get e to the 7x times 7. Yep, that first part is done. And put in x equals 0, y equals e to the 0 would be giving me y equals 1. Voilà. voilà. So that function satisfies that set of differential, differential equation. Well, let's get a little bit funky. Suppose someone asked me to find a solution to dy dx is i times itself, again with the property that y of 0 is 1. Well, if I believe that complex numbers work the same way as real numbers, I could just write down the answer. The answer being y equals e to the i x. Let's check. The derivative of e to the something is basically just itself, but I have to modify with a chain rule times the derivative of that inside. The derivative of i to the x would be i. So the derivative of this guy would indeed be e to the i x times i. We have this. And let's just check. When I put x equals 0, y equals e to the 0, yep, that pops y equals 1. So y equals e to the i x is the solution to this particular uh, differential equation. But note, so is y equals cosine of x plus i sine of x. Let me check. What's the derivative of this guy? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, plus i times derivative of sine, which is cosine. Well, I can think of negative 1 as i squared. And let me pull out a common factor of i. And I have cosine of x plus i sine of x. Yes, this is indeed i times itself. And just to be clear that we have both features, Put in x equals 0 into this formula. I'll have cosine of 0, 1, plus i times the sine of 0, 0, 1. So indeed, y equals cosine of x plus i sine of x is another solution to the set of dif uh, this differential equation. Well, it looks like we have now two distinct solutions to the same equation. Now, there's a little bit of deep theory here. One needs to uh, understand that differential equations do have unique solutions, at least ones of this type. In which case, if one's willing to believe that, I have to say that this solution, e to the ix, matches this solution. They have to be equivalent functions. Which leads to the most beautiful formula, as many claim, in all of mathematics. And by the way, I'm one of those people. I think the formula e to the ix equals cosine of x plus i sine of x is truly astounding and marvelous. 
Leonard Euler in the 1700s was dumbfounded when he discovered this connection between trigonometry and exponential functions. In fact, I can't resist taking a little sidetrack right now, just noting that this formula is so remarkable that it makes all those horrible trigonometric identities that one has to suffer through uh, in a pre-calculus course more or less trivial. For example, suppose I wanted to get a formula for cosine of 2x, this double angle formula. Well, to me, this formula says trigonometry is just exponential functions. So let's look at e to the i times 2x. I can think of this as e to the i x squared. Well, according to Euler's identity, this left-hand side is just cosine of 2x plus i sine of 2x. And according to the Euler's identity again, this right-hand side is cosine of x plus i sine of x squared. Well, I can expand this. Uh, cosine of x squared is cos squared x plus i sine x times i sine x negative sine squared x plus the cross terms plus 2i sine x cos x. So here I have, oh excuse me, that's very strange. Uh, here I have that cosine of 2x, the real part of the left hand side, must match the real part of the right hand side. Cosine of 2x must be cos squared minus sine squared. As a little bonus, I can see that the imaginary part of the left-hand side, sine of 2x, must match the imaginary part of the right-hand side, 2 sine x cos x. And if you like, you can probably write down almost in your head a formula for cosine of 3x, a sine of 3x, and so forth. This formula is truly miraculous. Anyhow, but let's, let's not be distracted too much by this. Let's go ahead and now work out, at last, i to the i-th power. All right, let's choose a clever choice of value for x. I choose x equals 90 degrees, which I'll write in radians. It's the appropriate form of figuring out angles in calculus. And I have that e to the i pi over 2 is going to be cosine of 90 degrees, zilch, plus i sine of 90 degrees is 1. 0 plus i times 1. I can now see that i is e to the i pi over 2. Beautiful. Very strange, but beautiful. Well, now it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. What is i to the i? Well, i to the i must be this formula, e to the i pi over 2, raised to the i-th power. That is e to the i squared times pi over 2, negative pi over 2. i to the i is this real number, e to the negative pi over 2. That has taken an imaginary number and raised it to an imaginary power, whatever that means, must turn out to be a lovely real answer. Gloriously strange. Absolutely beautiful and wonderful and weird. Actually, there's a little bit of a cheat here. Um, these trigonometric functions are actually periodic. I could also, I, instead of just putting 90 degrees, I could put a 90 degrees plus another 360, or another 720, or another. Uh, I know, uh, 1080 and so forth. All right, so actually this answer is not unique. I can modify this by any multiple of 2 pi. So actually there are multiple answers to i to the i. That's the wonderful beauty of uh, complex numbers, that exponential functions in the complex realm have multiple answers. They're multi-valued functions. Nonetheless, here we have it. i to the i is a whole host of real answers. My little challenge for you to end off this uh, particular video is can you use Euler's identity to now work out for me, or for yourself I should say since I'll never see it, what is the i-th root, excuse me, of i? How can one make sense of that? That is, find a number, be it real or imaginary, that multiplied by itself i times, whatever that means, gives you the answer i. Go for it.